When it comes to battery performance, the new Insta360 GO Ultra makes some pretty impressive claims, promising to significantly outperform the predecessor, the GO 3S, and even claiming to outperform Insta360's flagship camera, the Ace Pro 2. Can it live up to those claims? Let's find out. Hello and welcome! Today is all about battery performance on the new Insta360 GO Ultra. We're going to take a look at some background information and of course we're going to do some testing to see how well it lives up to its claimed battery performance in terms of total runtime and charging performance. Now there's a lot to cover, so as usual I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline, but first an important disclaimer. This Go Ultra was provided by Insta360 at no cost, but only under the conditions that I would inform my viewers of that, and that any video I produce would be my own work without any influence or input from Insta360. And of course, if you enjoy today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. Of course, battery performance is important with any camera, but it's especially important with a camera like the Go Ultra because it does not have user-replaceable batteries. When you run out of juice, you cannot simply swap out the battery and keep going, you have to put it on charge and wait. So obviously you want that runtime to be as long as possible, and you want the charging to be as quick as possible. Now when it comes to charging the camera, it also unfortunately does not have a USB port. The only way to charge it is by these contacts on the back of the camera, and currently the only compatible device for charging is the Go Ultra Action Pod. Now the Action Pod has its own built-in battery with about enough capacity to charge the camera two times, or of course you can plug the Action Pod in through its USB port in order to charge both the camera and the action pod, and when doing so, it will prioritize charging to the camera first. So let's talk about the battery performance claims of the Go Ultra, and let's start out by talking about its predecessor, the Go 3S. Now, when Insta360 launched the Go 3S last year, they did bring 4K resolution to the Go series, but because of its tiny size and, of course, tiny battery, when recording in 4K, the best you could expect was around about 32 minutes of recording time, or just over two hours of recording time when combined with the action pod. Now, with the Go Ultra being quite a bit larger than the Go 3S, it also has a larger battery. And according to Insta360, when recording in 4K, the standalone camera will give you about double the runtime of the Go 3S at around about one hour, and when combined with the Action Pod, almost three hours of runtime. When it comes to charging performance, Insta360 has equipped the Go Ultra with fast charging capability, with claimed charging time of just the camera from 0 to 80% in just 12 minutes, and all the way to 100% in 20 minutes, which is twice as fast as the Go 3S in spite of having a much larger battery. When it comes to charging the action pod, Insta360 claims 0 to 80% in 18 minutes, and all the way to a full charge in 40 minutes. And of course, we will be testing all of these claims. Okay, let's do some testing. Now, regular viewers to the channel will recognize my just for fun battery test setup. I have the camera set up filming itself in the mirror alongside a stopwatch, which both will start at the same time, of course. In our first test, we're going to test the standalone Go Ultra. I have it set to 4K 30 frames per second with the quick capture enabled. And as per Insta360's test conditions, I have the endurance mode turned on, Wi-Fi turned off. And under those conditions, Insta360 says we should expect to get about one hour of recording time. So let's go ahead and start it up and see how much we get.
So for our next test, I now have a fully charged camera inside the fully charged action pod. Once again, we're set to 4K 30 frames per second. I have endurance mode enabled, Wi-Fi disabled, and the screen will turn itself automatically off after 30 seconds. Under these conditions, Insta360 say we should see around 170 minutes of runtime. So let's go ahead and get it started and see what we get. So, in spite of having Insta360's recommended test conditions, we were not able to achieve the claimed runtime performance. In the case of the standalone camera, we were way off, about 15% short of the runtime claim. We did a little bit better with the camera in combination with the action pod, but even there we were also 7% short. Now, I understand the pressure that camera manufacturers have when one of them publishes a specification under somewhat unrealistic conditions, and I guess they all have to follow suit. But frankly, if Insta360 had published 50 minutes as the claimed runtime of the standalone camera, I think most people would have been just fine with it, and we could have achieved that result in our testing. Now, I did try to think of what else I could do to help improve the runtime. The only thing that came to mind was to reduce the bitrate from the high setting to the standard setting. And running the same test but using the standard bitrate, I was able to get a few more minutes. I got 55 minutes of runtime with the standalone camera, which is closer but still around 10% short of the claimed runtime performance. Now, I also repeated the test using what I consider to be more normal conditions. I had endurance mode turned off, voice and gesture control turned on, and under those settings I was able to get just 47 minutes of runtime, which I think is a more realistic expectation. Okay, so a little disappointing when it comes to the runtime performance tests. Let's see if we can do any better when it comes to charging. So when it comes to charging tests, we actually have four tests that we need to do. First of all, we're going to charge the camera from the battery of the action pod. The way we're going to do that is to have a fully charged action pod, not plugged in of course, and we're simply going to drop the camera into the action pod and start the clock. Here we're looking for a 0 to 80% time in 12 minutes and fully charged in 20 minutes. Test number two, we're going to charge the camera from AC power. So once again, we're going to start with a fully charged action pod, but this time plugged into a high power charger. We're going to once again drop the camera in, so it is now being charged from AC power. And once again, we're looking for 0 to 80% in 12 minutes and fully charged in 20 minutes. For test number three, we're going to charge both the camera and the action pod. So we're going to start out with a fully depleted camera in a fully depleted action pod, and we're simply going to plug it into our high power charger. Now in this configuration, I would expect charging priority to be given to the camera. So once again, I'm expecting to see 0 to 80% in 12 minutes and a fully charged camera in 20 minutes. Following that, how long it will take to complete the charge on the action pod remains to be seen. And finally, we're going to charge just the action pod. So in this test, we're going to start out with a fully depleted action pod and simply plug it into our high-speed charger. And here we're looking for 0 to 80% in 18 minutes and fully charged in 40 minutes. Now, monitoring the charging performance is a little bit challenging because the LEDs on both the camera and the action pod only tell you if it's charging or if the charge is complete. So in order to test the 0 to 80% performance, the way I did that was by pausing the test at 12 minutes, powering on the camera in order to check the current charge state, and then powering off and resuming the test. So let's start out by looking at the results of both test 1 and 2 together, because the results here were basically identical. When charging the camera using AC power, 12 minutes into the run, we actually exceeded the claimed charging performance at 82% charge. And amazingly, when charging the camera from just the action pod's battery, we actually did slightly better at 83%. Now, in both tests, it did take almost 23 minutes to get the full charge, 
But frankly, this is less of a concern because charging power is always reduced significantly for those last few percent. And I'm sure had I checked at the 20 minute mark, we would have been very close to the 100% mark. Now in test number three, when charging both the camera and the action pod together, we didn't fare quite as well. Here at the 12 minute mark, we had only reached 75% on the camera. Although similar to the previous two tests, the camera did show as fully charged just after 23 minutes. And the action pod reached 100% charge half an hour later, just after 53 minutes. And finally, test number four, when charging just the action pod at the 18 minute mark, instead of seeing 80%, I was a bit disappointed to see just 64% but the action pod was fully charged a full four minutes ahead of schedule at just less than 36 minutes. So some pretty mixed, but I think overall fairly positive results. I'll place the summary of all four tests here on the screen. You can see the numbers in green are where we exceeded the claim performance. The numbers in red are where we fell a little bit short and the numbers in white is where we either didn't have a test result or didn't have a specification to measure against. Now there is one more test that I want to report on and that is something I call the quick charge challenge. Now if you want further details about this test and see how some other popular action cameras fared, check out this video, but basically the test is as follows. We take a completely depleted camera, we give it exactly 15 minutes of charging using the highest power charge that the camera will accept. And then we see how much recording time we can get at 4K 30 frames per second using normal settings in order to calculate the record to charge ratio, which is basically how many minutes of recording time do we get for each minute of charging. And in the charging portion of our test, after just 15 minutes in the action pod, the Go Ultra was charged to an impressive 92%. We then set it to 4K 30 frames per second, and from that charge, we were able to get 37 minutes of recording time. Which for this test gives it a record to charge ratio of about 2.5 to 1. So two and a half minutes of recording for every minute of charging. So with that result, the Go Ultra ranks third in my all time quick charge challenge rankings. But I think it is important to point out that the Go Ultra is a very different camera to the others with a much smaller battery. So when it comes to battery performance of the Go Ultra, we got some pretty mixed test results. When it comes to the runtime tests, we definitely fell short of Insta360's claim performance, but when it comes to charging, I think we pretty much confirmed those claims. And I was pretty impressed with the charging performance of the Action Pod battery, meaning that the Action Pod will not only keep your Go Ultra camera topped up, but will even allow you to charge up a depleted camera in a very short time and get you up and running again. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, if you want to share your experience or make suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching.